Can you hear me now? I got you. Setting it up. Setting it up. Oh, all good. Late day podcast, David Lee Scales. I know. How unusual. This is an afternoon show for Chaz and I. I mean, the rarest, the rarest of afternoon shows. I was thinking we should have organized Negronis in advance. We so should have. We do. We haven't, you, talked, we haven't talked about booze in a long time. We haven't because we've been so healthy, David Lee Scales. We've just been drinking athleticgreens.com slash surf. And funny, funny that you should say that. I've got mine right here. I mean, you are going to be much more mentally uh, adept during this podcast than I am going to be. Uh, well, I already had mine this morning. And so this is going to be my second. I, and the only reason I'm doing a second dose is because we're recording and I figured I should do it on air. So I'm wondering what the effects are going to be. Well, I wonder, should we, should I be on a two a day program? Well, let's find out what happens to me first. Okay. I mean, I feel that next week I'm going to see you and your muscles are going to be bigger. You're going to be twice as fit as me. It could be. I'm, I'm wondering if it's going to like double my energy. It, there's a tipping point with that sort of thing. You know, you could get jittery and wired out. Like if you do too much caffeine or it's good for your stomach until you have too much of something and then you find yourself uh, expelling everything in your stomach. A lot of probiotics. And then, uh-oh. Mm-hmm. You said I'm going to be sharper than you. Is there a reason you're not going to be sharp? No, just yeah, like okay. running around mentally scattered, but I'm here now. I'm engaged. Okay. Um, as it relates to health beverages, or maybe not, I had a buddy send me a screenshot yesterday. He was going to order a smoothie from, what is it called? Sun, Sun Life Organics? Uh yeah, I think it's called Sun Life Organics. It's, I don't know, because you don't follow, Kel follow Kelly Slater online, you probably don't see this. You're still blocked, right? I can't follow him. Okay. One of his good buddies, he's always posting about and with, owns this company called Sun Life Organics. I think it's in Malibu or there's, started in Malibu. There might be multiple locations. And Kelly posted the other day that there's a smoothie there named after him. It's called The Goat. Well, my buddy was going to order a smoothie from that location, and they were advertising the goat smoothie. Do you want to guess how expensive Kelly Slater's goat smoothie is? I'm going to guess it is eleven dollars. Twenty one. Oh, are twenty one bucks for the goat smoothie? What's in it? Twenty one bucks. Uh, coconut sh coconut sorbet is the base, which. Can it be healthy if it has coconut sorbet in it? I mean, I am dubious, to be honest, until we get a acai sponsor of the health benefits of smoothies or acai or anything that has like crazy tons of sugar in it. I, that's what I feel like. I, I could be wrong, but coconut sorbet, cashew butter, grass-fed whey protein, goat mineral whey, maca, collagen, col colostrum, rice bran solubles, strong coffee, trace mineral complex, pink Himalayan salt, oat milk, coconut drizzled, topped with cacao nibs. I mean, I'm A, surprised that there's not uh, chia seeds in there. Has Kelly gone off the chia seeds? Remember that chia seeds used to be the Kelly Slater calling card. I thought uh, he had like a investment in a company or something. I'll do it too, but so that's my first wonderment my second wonderment is that seems like the ingredients for a straight up expulsion of everything for a couple of days totally um in 21 bucks i don't see where the money goes it's expensive in the toilet is where it goes david lee scales <laughs> exactly uh 21 dollars smoothie so anyways athleticgreens.com slash surf will get you everything you need one scoop of powder in water that's all you need I mean, that's all you need um, so the huge news this week, Chaz, is the uh, kerfuffle at the Vans Pipe Masters. Opening window started today, opening day of the, of the window started today. And the big news was that all of the CT men surfers have withdrawn from competition. And the best female surfer. Who is that? Beth Gilmore. Oh, okay. Wow. 
So there, so the question, it started out where it was Idolo, Felipe, and Gabe withdrew. And I thought about that and I was like, yeah, okay, Felipe, we would expect to withdraw. Idolo and Gabe, you would think that they would go. This is a perfectly, the format of the contest is perfectly geared for them. It's pipe. They've both won at pipe, but also they're adding, they're kind of incentivizing airs in this event. Those guys are as capable of doing airs at pipe as anybody. Uh, but then I thought, well, they're in Brazil. They don't have to be in Hawaii until February when the CT starts. And so maybe they just don't want to interrupt their vacation. Maybe they're like, look, this is one time in a decade where I get two or three months at home straight. And I, yeah, I'm going to stick. I don't want to interrupt that. Even if I can win that event, I don't want to interrupt it. So I will opt out. But then news broke this week that John John Florence withdrew from the event. And then Kelly Slater withdrew from the event. So well, what happened. is oh, happening? right there on the North Shore? Totally. Well, I mean, so the initial uh, thought that I think everyone had, you had, I had, was that the World Surf League had not sanctioned the event, right? That CT surfers showing up and paddling into the Pipe Masters would be either fined or dinged somehow uh, in their, yeah, on their CT run, right? Yeah. Not true. Not true. Have from the voice of the CT himself, uh that that is not true that this is a sanctioned event everyone has been okay to go do it who's the voice of the ct himself well dave prodan of course okay uh, yeah. yeah and so then i continue to dig and reached out further to other industry insiders and had one who has followed the tour for a long time been involved at the, the very high surf industry level uh who broke down for me look that the whole thing doesn't make sense anymore, to be honest. Like in a similar way that Vans has taken the Triple Crown digital, where it's no longer, you know, the best placing surfer at Haleiwa, Sunset and Pipeline wins the Triple Crown. Now it's this weird digital thing, which I haven't liked that for one second. Did you? I still want to see the actual contest happen, but I do like the idea of digital contests as well. But if, I mean, if I had to pick how the triple crown should run i would rather have it be actual contests yeah i mean the triple crown is a thing right that's a thing yeah. those those waves are all different uh and the the surfer who comes out and wins the triple crown has always been it's like the surfer who can perform well at Haleiwa sunset and pipeline that's a real thing right and so to make it digital where you're putting it more or less into the hands of who's got the best video team sort of right who has the who has the budget to go grab a good clip from Haleiwa, a good clip from Sunset, and a good clip from Pipeline doesn't seem half as interesting to me as the person coming up who's surfing each of those events well. Uh, and so then, so I think that was a, I think that was a real Vans gaffe, like taking something that wasn't broken and trying to fix it. And then this Pipe Masters, as all of these CTers fall out, so again, the source uh, claimed more or less, look, there's no stakes anymore, right? Like the Pipe Masters used to be the best surfers uh, in the world. You're, you know, it's a prestigious event that had meaning, that had weight. It used to, of course, basically decide the title and, or, you know, the end of season could have decided the title and now it's not end of season. And, you know, it's now a specialty event, but even if this Pipeline Masters was a CT event, at the start, it would still have gravitas. They would all be there. Now it is a specialty event that's become a novelty event, essentially, with the new format. Uh, and I, again, I think we talked last week about Stab doing interesting things uh, and great things. I'm, I'm not opposed to anything. They're making great content. They're doing good stuff. But a bunch of it is novelty. Uh, Stab really specializes in novelty from you know, putting bridges out at uh, waves where surfers can jump off to, you know, to, like to all of it, to the uh, electric acid surfboard test, to stab in the dark. It's great novelty footage. And so what they did is they took the Pipe Masters event and made it a novelty event, uh, which I think they went too far where it's just not interesting because there's no reason that, sure, I get the Brazilians maybe thinking, mm, you know, but 
even still winning a pipe master be uh being the pipe master is a singular thing in surfing it's akin to winning the a you just you don't turn it down the fact that they turned it down en mass means and that there was no compunction to turn it down from the wsl to me means there's something wrong in the actual pudding so why would kelly and john john withdraw because there's nothing winning a novelty pipe map, winning a novelty event pipeline is not interesting to them. There's no stakes. There's, it's weird and different. Uh, I watched, I feel my convictions on the matter were proven. Uh, Stab posted a Instagram yesterday or day before of, I can't remember the surfer, but some surfer getting a pipeline barrel and then boosting a huge air. Did you see that one? Was it front side or back side? Ew, uh, did he land the didn't he land the air? He landed. It was huge. It was a massive. Miguel, it was Miguel Tudela. That's where uh, that's the one. Massive. But so I watched that clip a couple of times, and that air is humongous, right? Clean, epic. Rewind and watch it in the barrel. Uh it's not a great barrel. Well, it was a crazy drop on a double up, but the barrel itself wasn't that deep. Precisely, but that's what yeah. that to me proved what I felt was my point is that if you are scoping the air section down at Aokai, you're not going to be able to get as deep as you want in the barrel. You're not going to be able to really, you can't do your best barrel and also go, you know, you're, you're hunting that air section too. So I think what we're going to get at the Pipe Masters is if waves even come at all uh is so so barrels followed by boots which again i think that it's the subtle art of the tiny differential between a good barrel and an okay one a pipeline is i mean it's something only i think the most kind of i don't know not just tuned in but like surf fans who really care about it only they get that real difference right like, yeah. is the guy coming out behind the stick? Is he coming out? Like, what did he do? And again, yes, the, nothing against that clip. It was a crazy drop. Uh, but there's no stall. There's no nothing in the barrel. He just gets barreled and then goes and boosts, which I think that's what we're going to get a lot of for this contest. And also no back door. Like, that's the other thing. There's no air section on the back door. So right. you're, it's become now a pipeline novelty contest which again, I think that, I mean, the, the proof is in what happened. Everybody, yeah. like the best surfers in the world, hands down, dropped out. So I'm, I'm tracking what you're saying and I'm not going to point the finger of blame at the WSL right now uh, because on the female side, Carissa Moore is still in it. Tatiana Weston Webb is still in it. Looks like on the men's side, Griffin Colapinto is the one CT surfer that's still in it. Um, so the WSL probably is not influencing the surfers to not participate. But I am still surprised that John John and Kelly withdrew because John John competed in a pipe event at the beginning of this year and he won it. And it had no, you know, um, money incentive. There's no points that he needed at that time. He just did it forever up until right now surfers competed in pipe events simply because they wanted to surf pipe with three other people out and that was enough incentive and i think from the women for the women's side we could easily argue that they're going to surf this event because that exact reason because they need time in the water they want time in the water especially the ct women they are, they have an event here uh that will matter for their points ranking and their world title campaign all of that and so this is a you know, getting practice in the water before that event. I'm just shocked that Kelly and John John, who love pipe, they're going to be surfing pipe every day up until the event. They're going to be surfing pipe every day after the event. Why would they not surf pipe during the event? That's what I'm surprised by. But that's what I'm saying is like the format is so unappealing to them that they don't want, they don't want to do it. It's not. It's worse. not that unappealing though. It's not like oh, you have to ride switch and or you have to ride a soft top or something. It's just, 
a slight tweak. I think John John could win out there no matter what the format is, you know? Well, I know, but, but that's like all, all I can see is if it's not the WSL that's making them not do it, which it's not, then it's that they just, they simply don't like the format and they don't want to do that. They don't want to go participate in a, a novelty event. It's interesting if all that you're saying is true, which I'm not convinced it is, but I don't have a better argument, by the way. Um, my other, my only better argument was the WSL must be influencing them, but all the sources report that they aren't directly from the WSL themselves. But my, um, uh, geez, what, it, what I got lost. What was I going to say? I mean, there's nothing. There's no, there, there's no reason that Kelly and John, I mean, John, John just won Haleva. He's in yeah. fighting form. He's all healthy. He's good. He's there. Kelly, no doubt, is either there or could be there. Uh, again, those okay, two. I, yeah. Well, what? Okay. I, I remembered what I was going to say. Sorry to interrupt you, but the Pipe Masters as a title has cachet. And so I would, the, the, so the reason I would argue against you is just that adding extra incentive or point value to heirs isn't enough of a change to throw off the cachet of the name Pipe Masters. Or if you are right, I'm shocked that that was enough to dissuade Kelly and John John because the Pipe Masters does have cachet. Or, or I'm just wondering if maybe the name doesn't really have cachet and it only was important as part of uh, the CT and the end of the season, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think it's either it's either a standalone event that's a pipeline event that's not kind of weird tweaky stuff and not a, sure, make it an invitational, right? But the way the invitational happened and all that, I mean, it's, it really is the definition of a novelty event now. It's not a, the whole, like, Stab, Stabified it, which Stab does a lot good, but I don't think Stab did this good. I think they misfired on uh, taking something that was great the way it was, that was pure, really, uh, and it could have been a standalone. You know, it, it didn't. It doesn't have to be attached to the CT. I think it works best with the CT, but it doesn't, doesn't have to be. It could be, this is the Pipe Masters. Whoever wins this, we don't care who wins the Billabong, or uh, yeah, the Pipeline Pro, right? Like the CT, thing is now like the Volcom Pi Pro or any of the ones that came after the Pipe Masters. This is the Pipe Masters. This is the actual Super Bowl of surfing. And it feels instead of really leaning into it being the Super Bowl of surfing, they made it a circus, like a clown show kind of, which they just didn't need to. And I, I truly feel that, that it's bitten them out. It's really surprising to see how it's all unfolded. Um, to add to your what you're saying is just read the list of names of people who are invited to the event. You know, and it's like, if you really had a list of, I, I don't even know how many men there are, 40 or so. If you had a list of 40 names of people you could invite to the Pipe Masters, there'd be 20 that you would sub out of this list and replace. There'd probably be 100 that you would put in priority over Rasta Rob or uh, Craig Anderson, you know, guys like that. They're just really odd fits. Uh, Rio Wida, you know, and I understand why those guys, what the decision between, between behind each of those guys, but they're also kind of stab favorite guys, like guys that stab always work with Mikey February, for example, Aton Osborne, for example, these are guys that Stab loves. And so they're kind of corralling them into this event. Um, so it does then make it look like Tosh more Tudor. of a circus. Yeah, Tosh Tudor, exactly. And that's, I mean, of course, th those are Vans picks as well, Tosh and Mikey February. But still, it's like, if it then becomes a circus, it undermines the entire Pipe Masters. I mean, it should be, the Pipe Masters should be, uh, and historically has been, the surfer who is like a real pipeline specialist, right? I looked yeah. through the, the names of winners today, uh, and it is obviously, I mean, it is a who's who of pipeline where you know and you can remember even them, like their performances out there, right? From 
obviously the Jerry Lopez's, Michael Hose, uh, Rory Russell, Andy Irons, Kelly a bunch of times. Like it's these guys who have mastered pipeline. And I, I wonder if these best, if like the top tier of surfers now look at it and say, well, this is not even about pipeline anymore. This is about something that is just not a good fit, right? It's, I will, and again, if all of them were in it, if Kelly, John, John, Gabriel, Idolo, well, who cares about Philippe? He's not a pipe surfer, but, but Philippe could be a raw Machado, right? Like you don't, I never thought of raw Machado as a pipeline surfer, but you do now because he yeah, won the that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a pipe master, but it meant something. And now I feel they've, they've made it mean a lot less where, so the name in fact doesn't have cachet or, or they've uh, eroded the meaning so much. And now there's another pipeline event in January and they could have made that distinction. They could have made hey, pipeline, whatever the WSL does, that's fine. That's an event at pipeline. This is the pipe masters. You know, the backdoor shootout is also an event at pipeline, which is great. Uh, it's a great event, nothing against it. It is not the pipe masters. No, nobody, you know, thinks about, okay, who was the backdoor shootout winner of 2016? Right. But pipe master means something, but again, I think they really, I, I truly think they, and again, this is not me being anti-stab uh, or anti-vans. It seems like they really put their foot in it. And I hope, you know, I wish for a entertaining show, but I also hope they go back to the drawing board next year and say, okay, we blew it. We made it too much about stuff that it's not about. This is one of the only waves in the world where it is a pure thing. It is who rides this wave the best, backdoor and pipeline, who picks the best waves, who gets barreled the deepest, right? It's not about the extra stuff. And Stab and Vans made it only about the extra stuff. Well, the local community, the North Shore surf community, has always had a very strong opinion and influence over the way that these events run. And, uh, you know, by giving six... 16 wild card spots or whatever it was when there were 24 surfers or 44 surfers on tour there'd be double as many wild cards as any other event on tour just for pipeline to ensure that the locals have access i would be surprised if the locals didn't have an opinion on this now of course there's more there, local surfers yeah so there are of course a bunch of local surfers into this event but everything else about it has made it, uh, like you said, almost a circus. And so I'm wondering if they're just, the local community is just getting hip to that now. Like, oh, wait, it's great that we were included in this event. However, this event isn't really the Pipe Masters any longer, and it's turned into something entirely different. They might not recognize it until hindsight, maybe, because they were all included. But um, I'd be shocked if they didn't identify some of these things that you're talking about. I mean, it seems like a, and again, we'll, we'll see. I could be totally eating crow. You know, they could get a, I mean, the, the forecast is not looking great. Let's be honest. Right. I mean, is there yeah. even the back end? obviously hard to project out, but it's, it's not looking like there's going to be great pipeline. I, it looks like there's swell around the 16th. So, right. And I think the window ends on the 20th. So anything can happen between now and then, but that is a possibility. Up and between now and then, not a lot of possibility. The uh, yeah, but again, I just it just seems like they unnecessarily went. I mean, pipeline is one of the waves. Go tweak, of course. The vans <laughs> isn't the title sponsor, but go tweak surf surf ranch all day, every day. Go stinking tweak, you know, I don't know, Margaret River, like. A lot of these waves you could say, or places, you you know, you could say, okay, we're going to have some kind of floating thing for uh, Margaret River this year, where it's going to be, you got to catch a banger at the box, you got to do something at Margaret River, and you got to do something at, uh, oh, what's the other spot there, Gas Bay or uh, North, North Point. North Point, yeah. Yeah, so you got to go do, you know, like make it a three-wave kind of you got to have a banger at each one of those to win, you know, like fully tweak one of those. That's all fine and good. Pipeline is the wave that doesn't need to be tweaked. It is the person who rides. Pipeline is enough. And then they, yeah. I, I mean, it is the 
dictionary definition of gilding the lily. Let me ask you this. Ask your opinion on how much you think this factors in. But VF Corp, uh, the company that owns Vans, I'm just going to read a couple of headlines here. Um, they're having a rough year. The VF Corp CEO resigns actually just this past week. Uh, the company's reduced the earnings forecast for the third time since last September. Um, let me see. They lowered the revenue earnings expectations. The CEO is stepping down. The stock is down 11% this year. So how much of that influences this? I know Vans themselves, who are owned by VF Corp, has let a lot of employees go. And so if you go to Vans Triple Crown or Vans uh, Pipe Masters website itself, it is just basically a homepage. There's no list of invites. There's no information. It's very poorly done, which is shocking from somebody like Vans. So I wonder if like those company layoffs, those little decisions like this that we're talking about, about not really understanding the core direction of what the pipe master should be. Is that because the salt in the building is left or the people who should be doing these things that were doing it in the past? Is it because they've left? I, I can't imagine. I mean, I, Vans is in trouble right now, right? Like the VF is doing poorly, mostly because Vans is doing poorly. I mean, Vans is the, is the real albatross around VF's neck. Uh, but you'd think that they would have, I would imagine there's a lot of collaboration between Stab and Vans on, on the public facing stuff. Uh, and so I can't, I don't think it's attributed to that. It, it feels like, I don't even know how they're going to get viewers, to be honest. Like with the WSL, you have a baked in fan base, uh, who will watch it kind of no matter what. And then for as much fault as they have and whatnot, WSL has a good boots on the ground program of I get alerts when, you know, an event is going to run, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Like it all seems we know. I don't even know, unless I'm directly paying attention or somebody's directly paying attention, do you do you even know that the pipe mask is on that day? Like how do you well did you know hard. did you know today that it was called off? Absolutely not. I didn't even know that the window opened today. Right. And that should be, that should be, and again, it all seems like I'm just bashing stab unnecessarily, but I am not, I'm, I'm necessarily bashing them because I think they, they broke this thing. They broke it. They went and put a bridge in the water that they didn't need to do. You know, it'll be interesting to see how hindsight, uh, or what this looks like with hindsight. And I think it'll all be determined by whether or not their swell like if there's pumping surf i would then imagine kelly slater gabriel kicking themselves because they're watching the best surfers in the world get the best waves in the world but if there's anything they're less not, than pumping not. surf yeah it's they're gonna it, it's, it's gonna fall flat i mean pumping surf fixes everything let's it does you could throw any kind of event in any wave and as long as it's pumping it's going to be interesting to watch that's the other thing though. It's not the world's best surfers. It's a it's a stab selected grab bag, like you said, of their favorites, more or less. And so yeah, great. I mean, I love Noah Dean a ton. And I Michael February is a beautiful surfer. Uh, like all of these guys, except for Tosh Tudor, I don't care. And you know, a handful I don't care about. But like if Mikey February goes out and you know gets like a shampoo and does like a smooth little air okay and hoist the pipe masters that's a disaster he's never he has no chance of winning this event i mean if the waves aren't great uh again of course he has like, no chance no yeah, matter what the like, conditions are he and tosh tutor have no chance you think mike mike february you're you're i mean he could get a beautiful like he's a smooth surfer just look at the look at the roster. Baron Mamiya, Seth Moniz. Like there's so many legitimately great Pipe barrel surfers. riders, short or small wave surfers, aerialists, all of it that are complete. And he's just he's got one trick, and it's a cool trick, you know. His style is amazing, but um, he doesn't win the Pipe Masters ever. Whoever wins, 
Uh, well, that's not true. I will. It's TBD on this one, but I. It feels like they wrecked something unnecessarily. Uh, the classic again. I've said it four times. Tried to fix something that wasn't broken. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I would, if any one of those surfers who pulled out was still in, it would be a world of difference because you could see how the best surfers at pipe compete against the world champion and a former pipe master. But when you don't have a world champion in the mix or a pipe master in the mix, then it then it really undercuts the entire thing. So of course, it would have been great to have four world champs and four pipe masters in there, but even one of them would have made it a lot more interesting to watch. The fact that all four of them pulled out makes it a lot less interesting. Gone. Uh, do you know where, do you view it on YouTube, Facebook? Uh, yeah, YouTube. YouTube. Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't even know how they're going to push it. It's hard. Like, it's hard. You, I think you take people take for granted. I take for granted that stuff happens and people watch it. Uh, when you pull out a organization like the World Surf League and just say, okay, whether well, this is a specialty event, Scab's clearly not big enough to drive, you know, any more than eight eyeballs to it. And so, I mean, where, how are they going to, what are they going to do to get people, get surfers to watch it? Who knows? I have no clue. Um, I have a feeling though, the WSL is laughing because they get grief from us, but from all the internet about the way that their events run. And we're just like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And they're like, you don't understand all the complexities. We're like, we don't care about the complexities. Just, just do, do it right. One. And now, and now Stab and Vans is having to go and doing it on their own. And before it even starts, everybody's complaining that they're getting it wrong. It's true. And I, I will raise my hand as first to like throw in unnecessary darts everywhere. But the problem with WSL is they have the infrastructure. They have done, they have done all that stuff, right? All they need to do is fix the product and then we're all golden. They have the easy yeah. problem. Stab and Vans had a more difficult problem, but totally blew it from the gate. Yeah. Well, um, while we're on the topic, let's cover real quickly the, uh, 10 new, sur 10 new male surfers and five new female surfers that will be added to the CT in 2023, because that was all decided after the final CS event at Haleiwa, which John John won in a blistering fashion. I mean, there is nobody even close to John John, right? Well, no, not, I mean, him, the way he surfed that event and the surfers coming on the event, I mean, applause, applause to them all. But my goodness, we should go down and talk about the one who is not going to be packing his bags by Margaret River. Who? Mm. The one? Maybe one of those guys makes it to the midseason cut. Oh, oh, do you have a name already picked? Or you're just saying just the Ryan, list. Ryan Callanan. Ryan Callanan's packing his. I love Ryan Callanan. Favorite server. He's packing his bags again. Well, let me let me run down the names then. You're right. There is one. I see one name that will yeah. make it. Um his name is Joe Alchianka, in my mind. I'm going to say, there might be two. I'm going to say a little wider. That's, in, we'll see. Great hope. Could, could bag a couple results, I feel, early. And hold on. So real quickly for the listeners, the legitimate rookies, this is their very first year on tour because these the other ones have already been on tour before. But the legitimate rookies are Rio Wida who is the first Indonesian surfer ever on the CT, Maxime Husano, Ramsey Bukayam, Ian Gentile from Maui, and then the rest of the list is Leonardo Fioravanti, Ryan Callanan, Michael Rodriguez, Joe Chianka, Liam O'Brien, and Ezekiel Lau. So Zeke's packing his bag. Zeke should pack his bag right now and just have it ready and he should write a note to himself that hey don't take it hard Zeke you are the ultimate surfer put it in that bag so he can zip it open and read that and feel good when he gets sent home uh the rest are done except for yeah Joao but again Joao was already on ish he wasn't really on right he was an injury replacement or something um 
No, he was on and he just didn't make it past the mid-year cut. He had a couple of really tough heats against John John. Remember, like he had a phenomenal heat at Pipeline, but lost to John John. He had a phenomenal yes. heat at J Bay, lost to John John. So he guess, just didn't. Guess what's going to happen him. again? Guess, guess who he's going to be surfing against again? Yeah, it's possible John. if he's the low man on the draw, he'll be drawing the big guns. But it does take it, it takes a while to find your footing on the CT. We've seen it time and time again. So I think he'll be better equipped on this second round. And that's also where the question lies with Rio Wida. You know, it's like, yeah, he's an incredible surfer, but Ethan Ewing fell off tour his first year and now he's in the top five. So it could happen to anybody. Can, but I think it's going to happen to everyone except my real Ida is my one that I think he could, like the way he surfs, I feel he could pull some results and all he needs to do is be top 16. You know, I don't know enough about him. I haven't seen him in enough variety of conditions to even assess. But I I look at the list and I just think boring, 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 boring. A little bit of interest here, boring. A little bit of interest here, boring, boring, boring. And do any of these names win an event this year? Heck no. no. Do any of these threaten the world title or the top five? Heck no. So what are we doing? Like, can we go back? That, can we go back to bashing the WSL? Yeah, sure. I mean, this is precisely it. Is that this? I said it before. I'll say it again. This feeding system up in is not interesting. These guys are going to come up and go right away. I mean, that's why I think you can't. Like, yes, the great stories are. I feel that the two properly great stories are first Indonesian surfer on tour and first Moroccan surfer on tour. Those are great stories, right? Like, because this is not like a uh, uh, yeah, they're not giving gifts to these countries. Like those guys, an Indonesian surfer for the first time in history earned a spot as one of the best surfers in the world. Same with Ramsey. A Moroccan surfer has done the work, earned a spot. He's a Moroccan surfer is one of the best surfers in the world. Like much applause to both of them. Outside of that storyline, I don't want the uh feeder system coming from crappy waves which is what, what these guys yeah. surf and that's how they arrive on tour is by surfing enough crappy waves who has the travel budget the desire the you know passion whatever to go and surf real crap for a long time yeah i know it's a problem <laughs> it's a problem every year when you see this happen and then there's zero excitement about the names that are joining. Um, which isn't, which isn't true in other sports. That's the crazy thing. Other, every other sport, every other sport, there is rookie sensations who the world cannot wait to see play. And sometimes they flame out and sometimes they do good. And sometimes the number seventh pick in the draft or somebody who nobody was paying attention to does good. There's always rookies in baseball, basketball, football, soccer tennis like guys first on who inspire right who come up and like don't win necessarily especially in the tennis and whatnot but like show flashes of brilliance uh i can't think of the last surfer who came up onto the tour besides john john jack rock jack robinson maybe but he does he i mean yeah he but he was one that he didn't need to you could have pegged him already. He already showed his flashes of brilliance as a surfer. You could have just put him on tour. I mean, which is, again, that's my, now I'll go back to stab. The, the idea of picking surfers, I'm not opposed to. Like, it's just stab pick, stab favorite surfers, as right. opposed to the ones who should be a pipeline. And, and pick surfers who, for their novelty thing with an air section at the end. Uh, if there was a panel who sat down and decided who the best surfers in the world are, like with trustworthy names, right? Like who would you put on the panel to pick the, the panel of five to pick the best, the best 20 surfers in the world? Kelly Slater, John John, Gabriel, uh, just the top surfers in the world can pick who the best ones are. Sure. And so then you let, and then you have a couple, you know, you have like a Pat O'Connell or like people have been around for a long time and, you know know how to throw some spice in or seeing something maybe a little different but yeah you did have dane reynolds be on the panel and yeah. there we go it doesn't you, you like all of it can be chosen none of it needs to be 
earned because the, and there can be a challenger series for guys to, you know, uh, test their chops and, you know, you win the challenger series and that's awesome. And then that's a thing in and of itself. Right. But uh, just this, this feeder in to me does not work. The feeder and the CT that itself are so different, you know, that that really doesn't service one another. Uh, however, talking about prodigies that'll come and like re kind of uh, jigger the whole tour Caitlin Simmers on the women's side, I feel like could be that person. So the five women who are qualified are Betty Lou Sakura Johnson, Macy Callahan, uh, Callahan, Molly Picklum, and then rookies, Caitlin Simmers and Sophie McCullough. And again, Betty Lou, Mary and Molly have been on tour before. Betty Lou might, you know, do some stuff, but Caitlin Simmers, when you watch her surf, she's on a whole different level. She's got so much confidence, so much kind of brash bravado to the style of her surfing. She does air, she gets big barrels. She doesn't seem to be afraid. I think she could be, she could shake up everything. I mean, I think it's different in the women's side and men's side. I think the women's side, there's been an explosion of yeah. talent growth uh, in the youngers like Sierra Kerr and these, right? Like they're doing stuff that nobody's done before them. So that's different. Like there's this whole new revolution happening in women's surfing. Uh, so maybe this system works for that. And I fully agree with you. Like the, I mean, women's surfing is going to be radically different five years from now than it is today. Men's surfing will not be at all. Like the, I think performance ceiling in men's surfing was reached a while ago and it keeps incrementally going up, right? Like, I think there, there'll be a guy who comes on the tour who does something, you know, I mean, you can you can kind of see the moments, I feel like Idolo's, uh, to me, still fully sticks in my memory. The first wave he ever surfed at the box, the way he dropped into that thing, the way he approached the wave, what he was able to do physically, you could kind of see, okay, this is a raising of the level, right? Other people surf the box, well, he did something that was extraordinary but those are kind of far and few between like it's really hard the like just the talent level amongst the men is so great women surfing i think with the equality push and all that it's a, now they're surfing better waves these caitlin simmers and sierra curves have grown up surfing better waves than their peers or i'm sorry than their elders and so they're surfing them different and they're yeah i mean it's just right for a massive explosion I'm excited. I'm excited to see what Caitlin does. I mean, again, rookie year is always tough. And even the most qualified pro amateurs get on tour and have a rough year figuring it out. So it could happen to her as well. But I don't know. I think she could actually handle the pressure and I think she could deliver. You know, I mean, she also has tools in her bag that very few other surfers on the tour have. Like she can go out and bust an air at the end and stomp it nine out of 10 times. And which other women surfer can do that consistently? None. Yeah. The other thing is just hearing her talk. She's so uh, grounded and level-headed that she feels very mature to me. I think she's only 16 years old, but I hear her talk and I'm like, dude, I should have her on the podcast because I feel like I could have an adult conversation with her. Yeah. So she'll be excited. That's exactly what you'll want to do. <laughs> I know. How funny is that? Um, <laughs> well, let's uh, let's do a couple of true grit or clickbait crap uh, articles. Pop sensation Shakira orders prying, though popular, surf tabloid to keep damn nose out of her blossoming relationship with dashing surf instructor, exclamation point. She did. Not just Beach Grit, but all media. I mean, she didn't single us out. So, but it's true. She is, for all appearances, dating a handsome surf instructor and telling people to butt out that she doesn't want them looking at her new relationship. Is he a loser? I mean, is he a legitimate professional surf instructor for a living, pushing people into waves? Yeah, seems that way. 
the wow. pictures I've, the pictures I've seen is a lot of holding soft tops. Like I think, and, and more specifically, I think he is her circumstructor. I think he is the man who pushed her into waves and taught her how to do it. So this is the equivalent of wealthy housewife, or she's not a housewife, she's clearly working, but wealthy woman dating the tennis pro after she gets divorced. Yeah, or a wealthy man dating the yoga instructor. Right, after yeah. the divorce. After the divorce. Um, it's a tale as old as time. I'm not opposed to it. I get it. Uh, I was just realizing, though, there is a huge disparity when you say surf instructor versus surfer <laughs> no 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 it just in the in the actual class uh job category of surf instructor you have brad gerlach and luke egan on this end of the spectrum or the dudes working next to huntington beach beer pushing kids into waves making minimum wage if you just say the title you don't know who you're gonna you could be referring to a war an ex-world champ or the beginner this is this is where Gerlach and Snips and the rest of them got smart and dropped the instructor and added coach. That is true. That is she true. is not dating a surf coach. If she was dating a surf coach, then I think, well, hmm. But a surf instructor, I'm like, ah, oh, why'd you do that? I know. It is uh it is almost a kook a kook and current thing. It is. Surf instruction. Nearly. Nearly. Nearly, except for. Gerlach and all those guys smelled it out way ahead and said, we're coaches. We're not instructors. Smart, smart yep. branding on their part. Yep. Um, True greater clickbait crap surfing credited with success of smash hit the white Lotus. It's true. Who's I mean, doing the crediting? Well, Mike White, the creator of white Lotus uh, in an interview about the success, he is, you know, Mike White, uh, you followed his career. I love Mike White. Yes, I have. Yeah. He's kind of an albino looking guy who uh, was in movies, including School of Rock with Jack Black, which he wrote. Uh, and then he's had a couple like, some, you know, he was like kind of an actor, not a super famous actor, but in stuff and then wrote stuff. I think he, uh, he's done a couple shows, but of course, The White Lotus on HBO, if those listening who haven't seen it is started season one and go right into season two it's brilliant it's wonderful i came in a little tepid on this season but oh man it's good anyway brilliant writing brilliant character the whole thing is brilliant so this is a big success and uh he said mike white said in an interview like asked the question how did it feel to like do your all of a sudden do something that's both critically acclaimed and every, you know it's the like show that people are talking about and he said well it feels like i've been you know i'm a surfer who's been out in the ocean for 25 years and i just caught my first wave is his line and i thought that's funny uh but then it would have been funny enough for a headline but on quick search mike white I didn't find him picture, pictures of him surfing, but I found so many pictures of him at different premieres, et cetera, throwing absolute loose shakas, like straight up Hawaiian open-handed shaka. And so Mike White is straight tuned in to our surfing world in deep and profound ways. So if I Mike, could you imagine if Mike White was listening, if he was a listener of our podcast? It would be amazing, but I hope he, but I just have to commend him. That Shaka, Mike White, that you throw on red carpets and at events, don't change a thing. It is well, exactly the way the Shaka is supposed to be thrown. That's why I'm saying he might be a listener is because we've covered that exact topic and he we may have. have learned it from us. He could have, he could have, but it's worth, again, for listeners, I mean, David Lee Scales will put one up on Surf Splendor dot com slash surf and you can go see mike white's loose loose shaka i'm afraid of putting them up because i think they're getty images and beach girl will get sued but <laughs> splendor can do it do you, can you just license it do you have to pay for it uh i'm not i should look into that i should yeah. look, look and see how much one of those costs probably not cheap yeah um well i love my mike white and i love that he's having this moment in his career and I love that he attributed the success to surfing or compared it to surfing. Compared it, compared it to being out in the ocean for 25 years and then catching his first day. I've loved everything I've ever seen from him. He's great. He's, he's great. so great. 
He's yeah. so great. And White Lotus is, I think, his the best thing that he's done. And I'm glad that you've come around to season two because I feel like season two is better than season one. Could be, could be. I mean, again, it's just so good. Like his weaving in, it seems like both have, yeah, I mean, don't get just me started about White Lotus. Well, we talked about it. We talked about season one. I remember explaining it this way, but the exact same thing is happening in season two where the tension continually gets ratcheted up. So every episode, more tension than the previous, but every individual scene, regardless of which storyline it's following, because there's eight you know different storylines, let's say, or eight different characters staying at the White Lotus, each time they go from this character to that one, it ratchets, and but each storyline along the way gets ratcheted. So it's just like this thing that just continually gets ratcheted until it's so tense and tight. And then in season one, it literally comes to the moment where there's a wall divider with two characters on either side of the wall and a knife goes into one of them as they cross, you know, as they come around the wall. Like it literally, the tension is cut with a knife. You know what I mean? Like it's metaphorical, but it's so well done. And I feel like they're doing the exact same thing with this season. I just can't identify whose knife is going to go into who. I mean, the, the brilliant thing about it is that, of course, and this is what he said, too, in the same interview, if I would have known that I should have known that opening with a dead body, uh, it works, right? Like it's a trope kind of, but you open with a dead body and then you flash back and then move forward. Um, he does it so well, I feel that, of course, you see episode, episode one of both season one and two. A, there is a dead body. You don't know what who the body is, but there is a dead body. He goes then so goofy, kind of, because he has to take all the tension out. And so by season or by episode like three and four and stuff, I forget that one of them's gonna die. Like I I'm just paying attention to the awkward exchanges and the the various interpersonal relationship stuff is so well done and then by by the time it gets like three quarters through then i'm like oh yeah now the tension's back right to oh yeah, well, somebody's dying who's who's going to die well the one person we know it isn't is the gm or the concierge at the hotel because she is in that opening scene standing on the cliff she walks up and the police are she asks she yeah. asks the police what's happened they go oh we found a body so we know that she's not the victim. Oh, there's multiple bodies? Don't they say we found more than one? I need to go back and watch it. Yep, you sure do. We know it's I not the, wife, one. the blonde wife. Why? She's the one who found the body. Oh, okay. I forgot about that too. But yeah. either one of them could be the killer though. Could be. Could be. I'm saying it's Cameron and Rich Dude killed each other. Interesting. Um, one final true grit or clickbait, although it's Derek's article. So I don't know if you have the answer to me, whether or not it's true grit. I know. He wrote shockwaves sent through the women's pro surfing as Australian star is accused of stealing another surfer's wallet and illegally spending thousands of dollars online shopping following a wild dinner in Hawaii. Sorry, I was drunk. It's true. I asked Derek about it and he said, it's one of our specialties where the headline is longer than the story. And I said, yes, but I didn't get any of it, but it, yes, it's somebody reached out to Derek with this sultry tale. So I think hopefully more will come out. So who's, who stole whose wallet? I don't know. I have no information. I just know it's true. I know this happened between professional surfers. And so like the White Lotus opening up with the, dead body and then going back and then we'll we'll puzzle it puzzle it out together all right can't wait yep excited can't wait um let's take a quick commercial break to recommend to our listeners the greatest gift that you could give somebody this holiday season and then we will come back with barrel or not let's do it chaz smith what do you recommend giving somebody who you love this christmas if you want to give them the best gift of all time are we talking something you wear or something you put in your body? I would suggest, well, great question, but let's talk about something that you might wear that could be the ultimate tool 
that you can carry with you for the rest of your life? I'm going to say, but you know me, David Lee Scales, I'm a straight watch man. And getting a watch, has anyone ever gotten a watch and not felt special? Any man? No. Sorry. No. sorry. I think, I think it, but even a lady, I think it's a well, great, I mean, they watch too, great sure. gift. Does, does Vare make women's watches? They do. Oh, the, are you kidding me? I thought we were have forced into the realm of sexism, but we're not. Vayerwatches.com, V-A-E-R. Save 15% with our promo code, which is the word SURF15, SURF15. And uh, they make insane watches that are- I've been wearing, I've been wearing my Vayer nonstop since I got it and couldn't be happier. Could not be yeah. happier. Look, it looks great. It performs great. I surf in it. I mean, I've been, again, today. Have you looked at the waves today? No. It is so flat here. I like stood and stared slack job. How, f like, it's cold and windy. And so there's like a crappy, like, crumbly wind on, wind on it, which is making like two inch waves break. And I sat and I stared and I thought, this is how people in Michigan feel. They look at their big old body of water and this is what it produces for them. Anyway, it's been pumping, I guess relatively pumping. Guess what I've had this whole week, David Lee Scales, during my serves? Confidence that you knew what time it was. Exactly, I had places to be. I literally had places to be. I, had, I was fitting serves into windows, paddling out, checking the time, checking the time, using even the bezel that rotates so I could actually time my surf, right? I would yeah. go in there, put it on. Okay, this is when I paddled out. Oop, that's my surf. That is my hour, 10 minutes. Off I go. Brilliant. I love this watch so much. I know. And not to throw shade at anybody else, but we talked about tide watches years ago. And it's like, I just can't, it's so surf specific. Like I don't want to wear it, even if it has a function that I would appreciate. It just looks so surf specific. If you're wearing a tide watch, you're identified as a surfer. I don't really like that. This, it's a cool watch. It looks great. You could dress it up. You could dress it down. It's functional. Obviously we've got the solar one. So it runs on solar power. And uh, if you just, you don't need to go put it in front of the sun. If it's just getting regular exposure to the sun, it'll never, ever die. It's so great. the fact that it's a honest to goodness perfect gift you cannot go wrong for husband wife brother friend father mother get them a bear totally they have a bunch of different styles they're assembled in the usa free shipping free returns all of that jazz um so check them out vayerwatches.com v-a-e-r watches.com and then our promo code is surf 15 get it all right, Chaz, we are back to close out with Barrel or Not. And the first one comes from a news story out of Indonesia. Love it. Premarital they are, sex. They are outlying premarital sex. And uh, this is not just for residents. They're outlawing it for tourists as yep. well. Yep. So you really better watch out. If you go there, you're not married and you have sex, you could get thrown in jail. You so, can go there now, David Lee Scales. You Great. go and feel good. I can indeed. Uh, so the question to you, Chaz, is barrel or not premarital sex? No barrel, David Lee Scales. Avoid Wait it? Wait until you're married. Wait until you're married. That's the way it was all intended to be. Yeah. Wait. Wow. No barrel. Okay. So yep. this feels entirely different than I thought you would answer. I for sure did not see you going this direction but I'm going to have to take the opposite stance and push up against you. Um, I don't know why you would. Well, I'm going to just throw out some practical concerns. What if it is, okay, what if you've been dating for years? Great, get married. You're silly to be dating for years. Oh, okay. Well, what yeah. if you are, What if? okay, what if you're 18 years old, you're planning to go to college, you're planning a career, but you're dating somebody who you plan to get married to, at a reasonable time in your life. So maybe when you're 25, 26, but you're only 18, you're saying wait five or six years, date this person and don't have sex the entire time. 
have some self-restraint, uh, you're probably gonna break up with her anyway. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah, that's what I say, David Lee Scales. Wow. Yeah. What about if you've already been married once before, or, or however many times before, multiple times before, you're grown adults, you wanna to get to know one another, you don't wanna commingle finances and everything else that comes with marriage, but you wanna figure out what's what before you get married. If you really wanna have sex, just get married. Do it the Shia way, David Lee Scales. Have wow. you, are you aware of Shia Islam? I'm aware that it exists. I'm not sure what detail you're referring to. So the Shias have a thing where you can get married for a night. You, you can get married for a night if you want. You then off you go the next day. You can do that. That's okay. How is Actually, that? So do you get divorced <laughs> at the end of it? Is it an annulment? What is it legally? I think you get annulled. I don't think it's a divorce. I think you, that, you get That annulled. is such a workaround. <laughs> and it, it completely nullifies the importance of marriage. I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a pro, like, I feel that in general, uh, people, you have a desire or something, and then it's just, okay, then you have a right to give into that desire, right? What happened to a little self-restraint? What happened to a little bit of, like, dignity of, like, saying, no, you know, I'm not going to be just driven by my passions. I'm going to, I'm going to be true and serious. I'm all for it. I love, I think there's a lot of virtue in restraint, but there has to also be, um, there's a flip side of that as well. There's a, there's Divorce. a rushing, or yeah, there's a rushing into marriage that comes with a tremendous amount of consequence. And I could argue more consequence than the premarital sex presented. Maybe, who knows though, but We've talked about divorce before here, that it's important to get, I mean, divorce is equally frowned upon. Let's just be all put our cards on the table, but uh, get married, get divorced. Okay. So you're all for it. No premarital sex, but down for divorce. Yep. I like you it. Right <laughs> <laughs> Great advice. Never steering people wrong. Nope. Um, all right. Barrel or not number two comes from a listener. Yo. I think I've got a barrel. I think I've got a solid barrel or gnaw for you guys, but a quick preface first. As a lifelong surfer around rocky point breaks, it's not uncommon to get small cuts and scrapes from running in and out of the water. Besides quickly cleaning them out, quickly cleaning them out to be safe, I've always been a believer in just letting cuts and scrapes air out to heal. This has always worked well for me until I recently got a deeper slice on my knuckle that wouldn't heal because of constant movement of my thumb. Annoyed and tired, I finally decided to go against my lifelong philosophy. Once I finally bandaged, bandaged it, it seemed to heal surprisingly fast within a few days and completely close up. This obviously rocked my world and my philosophy around healing standard cuts and scrapes from an active lifestyle, but I'll likely go back to my old ways of air drying. Yes, plenty of I'm getting old stubbornness, light macho-ness here, but the question to you is, barrel or not, nah, Band-Aids for adults. No barrel, David Lee Scales. I've got one right now. Oh man, sailing. I think it's three weeks ago now. Boats, sailboats in particular, are worlds of cuts. That's all they are. It's like a cut moving on the water. So I was, I can't remember how to, everything, you have to do everything quick on a boat, right? Or there's times when, yeah, I can't remember what, like the wind was howling and I had to get us off our mooring and the line was stuck. And so I'm down on my hands and knees, you know, just wrenching this thing and rubbing my foot against the deck. And so of course, like, uh, you know, kind of upper big toe knuckle, just like a hole, you know, from just like the friction hole, just the rub hole. Uh, that thing is still with me today. This is three weeks on. Painful, proper cut still. Not put one Band-Aid on it, David Lee Scales. And you just muscle down. The ones that take a lot longer to heal, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And so what you're doing when you Band-Aid it is you're robbing your stronger. You're hurrying up the healing and turning yourself into a little wussy. I agree. You're cutting it, character development, 
possibility and opportunity right there and you're completely erasing it. Yep. You take that pain, you live with that pain, you enjoy that pain, you cherish that pain. Don't put stinking ouchy, ouchy ointment on it and band-aid it up. No. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, I agree. I generally... I agree with you and I agree with this guy's previous life experience. Whenever I get random small cuts like that, I don't even address them. Just let no. nature take its course. That's what you're supposed to do. So you get stabbed. Yeah. I mean, it's exactly. out there. Big deal. Exactly. So Rely on us thing? for doctorly advice as well as I, love advice. I, uh, wife got new sheets, ones we've talked about before, the fretes. Uh, and so I came home from the boat that time with just like a bloody mangled foot. And thought, what am I going to do? What did I do, David Lee Scales? I just Light covered up, up the sheets. No, nope, I just put a sock on the thing and save the sheets. I'm not about to touch a band aid. Right. Uh, by the way, speaking of sailing, I'm going to go sailing for the very first time next Thursday. Oh, are you going to participate or are you going along for the ride? Uh, I got invited by the crew at Florence Marine X, actually. What? And I know. And it's like a members thing. Like it wasn't just me, like they invited the members who live locally um you know who've bought product basically from them in the past which and, is it, uh, it's not john john's boat of course no it's, it's not john john's boat um i don't know whose boat it is actually but no i am i don't i don't know maybe they'll make me participate they said no experience required just come ask, along and ask to participate sailing okay. is like and it's one of those it's so complex it is so crazy complicated the more you can learn like even taking a couple notes, like, okay, this was this, and this is it. like, it is sailing is phenomenal. Go, go force participation. Yeah. I mean, honestly, a lot of the reason I said yes is because you're into it and the way you've talked about it made me interested. It's great. I mean, it is something, it stretches your brain. It destroys your body. It, like you got to be thinking about a trillion different things. The stakes are high. Unlike the pipe masters, there's actual stakes out there. Cool. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, final barrel or not also comes from a listener, but this one comes from a listener call. So let me pull this up real quick, share the sound with you. And uh, here we go. Hey guys, this is DJ Seaweed. Yes, your resident DJ. Anyway, I'm watching the World Cup go England and it's halftime and I'm wondering what is going on with these commentators. There's about five of them, and they're all talking football, a.k.a. soccer, and they're dressed up real nice in these suits, a real nice suit, a commentator. And there's four of them, three out of the four, are wearing trainers. I'm sorry, you guys call them tennis shoes in the States. So three out of four wearing tennis shoes, and it's ugh, ugly. So bear or not, wearing tennis shoes with a suit. Ugh. Great question. I've seen this all the time. It's a great question. And you would think I should be a full no barrel, right? No yes. barrel. It is event dependent. Uh, so if your look is suit and tennis shoes, then you are a no barrel that's your thing boo on you if you're going somewhere formal and we're gonna leave black tie out of this altogether, right we're not talking tuxes here we're talking events with suits but if it's say if you're going to the ballet or if you're going to I don't know, something something properly formal then put on your dang dress shoes right now if the wedding you're going to is outdoors you know and it's kind of I don't know, like a little more casual. Sure, that's okay to wear tennis shoes. I think there's a time and a place to wear tennis shoes with the suit. Uh, you just have to be aware of the occasion. And these guys talking on TV, specifically, that is not an occasion to do that. You are, if you're mm. wearing a suit, then that is a formal enough event where you should be throwing dress shoes on too. And if you're wearing a suit on TV, I'm gonna say you should be in dress shoes. Well. There's such a variety of tennis shoes, right? Or trainers. Like, I don't know if he's talking about like sleek white ones or if he's talking about Air Jordans. Sure that's, what, that's what they're in. They're in like 
they're in designer tennis shoes. They're okay. not wearing junkers, which to me, that's the designer tennis shoe is annoying in and of itself, or can be. I have a handful of designer tennis shoes, but uh, the way they're wearing them, where they're all clean. So when I do uh, shoe or sneakers with a suit, oftentimes I'll throw like crazy beat up ones on just because that's the look that I'm going for, right? I'm like kind of balancing it. And it's not, if I do that, it's not a formal event. It's usually an outdoor kind of thing. And I'm, you know, but it, that calls for a suit. So, but if you're wearing like a brand new pair, if you go out and buy a real fancy pair of Balenciaga sneakers that are super clean and you wear them with your suit, then you're dumb. Yeah, I don't get the look at all, to be honest. I don't know of a, that I've ever seen it look great. And the other thing is dress shoes are as comfortable as uh, tennis shoes are or sneakers are nowadays anyways. And there's also such cool dress shoes that look amazing that, you know, they're not just Oxford wingtips of my youth. There's so many cool ones now that are super comfortable. It's an opportunity to wear them. You don't get any other opportunities to wear them. Not and You hit the nail on the head. Not only an opportunity to wear them, an opportunity to shop for something uh the and buy something that you otherwise would not at all right like yeah. it's something you have i mean it's part of being an adult man is having a good pair of dress shoes like imagine your children grow up your young son grows up david lee and he goes into your closet and all he sees is sneakers he'll think my dad was just soft right like don't you remember looking in your dad's closet as a kid and seeing like his dress shoes dad stuff yeah that's dad stuff exactly men leave your sons and your daughters i suppose an image of you in actual dad stuff not just being a soft comfort man not enough opportunities to get dressed up in general so enjoy that and then certainly don't undermine it by trying to dumb it down i hear you yeah i agree uh well hey dress shoe talk premarital sex talk, Vans Pipe Masters talk. We cover it all here. I mean, th there is nowhere else you need to go. Joe Rogan's got nothing on here. You can totally. even get the steroid talk next week. I know. I know. Next week for sure. I know you've been tracking that story. I just killed a damn mosquito. How are mosquitoes still alive in like frigid temperatures? The world is, it's like apocalyptic right now. It's done. It's over. Everything's Thanks. changed. Thanks Vans and Stab. I know. I'm totally blaming them. Yep. All right, Chaz. Well, hey, great seeing you as always. Great seeing you next time in person. Let's ho next time. Well, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta go sailing on Thursday. So we gotta either do it Wednesday or Friday. Okay, let's do I got theater week coming up next week. Let we'll me touch base. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay, we'll touch base next week. Great. All right, Chaz, uh, we'll have Hannah sign us off as always, but uh, looking forward to seeing you then. And uh, yeah, until next week. Bon voyage.